Hey everybody, it's Stuart here with Morphit. Again, ready for another uh, workout here during our pandemic lockdown. Uh, today is bands and balls. So if you have your mini bands handy, take those out. If you have an exercise ball handy, take that out. And if you have the longer resistance bands or maybe bands with the handles, you can take those out. We do have uh, an opportunity to use those a couple times today as well. Um, I neglected to get mine, so let me just grab my bands here. You should be fine with just uh, one of the uh, resistance bands. You probably don't need them in pairs, but maybe grab a few different resistances um, so that you can change out to go lighter or heavier as you need throughout the workout. Uh, we're keeping things a little bit uh, more moderate or light uh, in, in this uh, afternoon workout here. Uh, of course, you can always work as hard as you want, uh, but our format is fairly straightforward. We're going to be working for 45 seconds on an exercise. We're going to take a full 15 second break before we transition to the next exercise. We'll have three exercises in each circuit. We'll be doing three sets of the circuit, and we have three circuits all together. So pretty straightforward standard format for us today. We are going to get started with a little bit of a warm up here. All right, so let's find a little bit of space. Uh, no equipment for the warm up, just body weight. Whew, excuse me, we're going to get started here with some body weight squats. So feet shoulder width apart, toes out, hands wherever you want them, in the air on your head out in front. Squat down and back up. We're going to go through eight squats. This is three, four, five, three more, six, seven, and eight. From here, we're going to squat down, put the hands on the floor, walk yourself out to a plank position, and then we're going to push our hips back towards our heels. Try not to let the knees touch the floor, and then push your body weight back over the hands. I'll show these from the side. We're gonna go through four of these. Pushing back, and then back over top. Just to warm up the legs, warm up the shoulders. That's three. One more. That's it, keep your knees straight. Walk yourself back up to a standing position, and here we're going to go into some high knees. So, alternating sides. If the impact is no good, then you can walk. That's no problem. We're just going to do time based here. Don't worry about counting. Get the heart rate going, and we'll go into a couple more mobility exercises before we go back to heart rate stuff. Five. Four, three, two, and one. All right, knees straight. Walk the hands back down the legs. Get your hands to the floor, and then step or jump the legs nice and wide. From here, we're going to pivot 90 degrees to the left. You can place your back knee on the floor if you'd like, or you can keep it elevated. But we're looking to get a stretch in the back of the front leg, so hamstring of the left side, and the hip flexor of the right leg, in the back leg. Okay, walk the hands back to the center, keeping the feet wide, just pivoting on the feet, all the way over to the opposite side. Now we're stretching out um, the hamstring in the right leg, hip flexor in the left side. Nice little stretch there. Walk it back to the front. Walk your hands out to a plank. You're gonna kick your feet or step your feet back to the center. Bring your knees down to the floor. Lean back, hands behind you. Going into a sesa position. We've been doing these a little bit this week. And then drive your glutes forward to get a stretch in the quadricep muscle. So front of the thigh, 
is what we're after for this stretch. All right, come back up, hands on the floor in front of you. Put the toes underneath the heels, extend the knees out, walk the hands back in, and we're heading to some jumping jacks here. So more heart rate work. Again, time-based, don't worry about counting. Try to keep the arms nice and long, see if you can get them all the way up overhead. You can even clap at the top, if you'd like. 10 more seconds. Three, two, and one. Very good. And then take your left leg, keep it straight out in front. And we're gonna go through some wrist. This is not your wrist, this would be your ankle. So we're gonna go through some ankle circles. You could do wrist circles, I suppose, at the same time, if you're coordinated. Try to keep the knee nice and straight. That's half of the battle, is keeping the leg straight, not letting the knee bend. All right, bring the leg down, and kick the other side. Knee nice and straight, ankle circles. How's everyone enjoying the snowfall out there? Looks like mid-December again. All right, bring that foot back down. We're gonna head back down to the floor one more time. Down to a squat position. Bring your hands behind you. If your shoulders don't like this movement, then just lie on your back and do some hip drives from the side. Here we go, we're gonna go into a crab extension. So hips go up, head goes back. Hold it for about three to five seconds. Come on down and then go back into it. This is a great activation for the posterior chain or the back side of the body. Back up. We got one more, just four of them. And good, sit down, lower yourself to the back if you're not already there. Arms out to the side. Lift your right leg up in the air and drop it down to the left. We're gonna get some rotation before twisting through the spine, which is a nice little release for some tension that we build up throughout the spine when we're sitting at home, not sure what to do with ourselves all day. All right, back to center. Left leg is gonna go up and drop it over to the right. You might hear a couple pops or feel a couple releases. That's pretty normal. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, we're gonna call that the warm up. Everybody, come on up. So make sure your bands are handy. Make sure the ball is handy if you've got a ball. I've already explained the format. A quick reminder, we have three exercises. We're gonna go through them in a circuit, 45 seconds of work on each one, and we have three sets. Uh, in between each uh, circuit, I'll explain the exercises that are coming up. So, uh, we're gonna start by getting our mini band and placing it above our knees. For a lot of these exercises, there will be some modifications or alternatives. So I might show one or two, and then I'll explain a few more as we're going. Uh, the first one we're gonna work on is a uh, lateral or sideways sumo walk, keeping the knees nice and wide. The option for that one is to do an actual turn and turn, never letting the knees come together, and then you go back to where you started. So there's a couple options on that one. Uh, from there, you can leave the band on the knees uh, for all three exercises if you'd like this round. If you feel you need to give your glutes a break, then you can take it off after the sumo walk. Second exercise, heels up on top of your ball, hips up. We're gonna go through a curl, and then we're gonna add a hip drive at the top. Lower the hips back down, and then curl back out. So in, up, down, 
and back out. That's exercise number two, with or without the band. Your third one, uh, we have two options. We can do either something that's a bit more stable, a bit more uh, approachable for a lot of people, and that'll be sitting on the ball, rolling just to your low back, and going to a crunch on the ball. We want the ball as close to the hips here as possible. We don't want to be way up at the shoulders. If you want to spice up your workout today, then you'll do ball tucks. So hands on the floor, push up position, feet on top of the ball, and then you're going to curl in and curl back out. All right, so that's your option for the third exercise. And then we come right back to the sumos. We're doing three rounds. Here comes your timer. Uh, remember, it's 45 seconds of work. So work as hard as you would like. If you don't quite get the exercise in the first round, there's two more afterwards. So here we go. This is the entry level or just the most basic position, which is the monster walk. I'll try to stay within the frame of the video here, but you travel as far as you want. If you want to add that turn in, keep your legs wide. You're turning forwards every time. So you're always turning towards the front of your body. I've done two this way. Now we'll do two back the other way. Depends on your surface, depends on your knees. The twisting might not be a good option for you. And then just stick with the monster walks, no problem. Three, two, and one. All right, we've got the curls. Either leave your band on or take the band off. That's your call. On the back, heels on top of the ball. Three, two, and one. Hips are up. Remember, it's four movements. In, up, down, and back out to the start. So the heels curl in, the hips drive up. The hips go down, the heels roll back out. If you can't do the hip drive, just do the hamstring curls on the ball. If you don't have a ball, that's fine, on your back, and you can do the hip drives here, or if you did yesterday's workout, you can do those heel walkouts we did. Walking the heels out, and then walking them back in. Any of those are gonna work the back of the legs into the hamstrings. All right, what's next? Oh yes, uh, ball crunch or ball tuck. I'm gonna show the crunch again. If you wanna get in your push-up position, throw your feet up on the ball and get into that tuck right away, you go for it. All right, sitting on the ball, roll to your low back. We're gonna let our torso mold around the ball. Go as far as you're comfortable here. You don't have to go beyond neutral if you don't want to and then crunch back up. Think of driving your chest straight up to the ceiling and your chin as well. So we want to avoid finishing here. I don't want to be looking at the wall in front of me because this is no work anymore. I want to think of staying, leaning back at the top because that's where I get the work in the abdominals. And again, the further up the ball I travel, the more work I'm going to get. You should feel that in the abdominals. Great work. All right, off the ball, we're back to the sumo walks. I'm going to show a slightly different variation here. With those turns, you can jump it instead of spinning. So here we go. I'm in my low squat. I'm going to jump and jump, and then back the other way. Always turning forwards. I don't recommend turning backwards unless you're really comfortable with it. That's up to you. Or stay with your walks. If you're bored of going sideways, come say hi to me. You can walk forwards, you can walk backwards. We're staying low, the knees are always out. The last thing we want is to have our legs in this position when we're doing this type of exercise. Think of your knees always outside your feet. Spend more time with your feet in the air. That'll give you more work as well. All right, on the back. We're back to the hamstrings. Three, 
Take breaks whenever you need it, guys. We have three rounds. We're halfway through this circuit. Hips up. Bring them in. Drive them up. Back down. And roll it out. Roll it out. I lost my mic there for a sec. Good. Try to keep your head on the ground. My head is up, because otherwise my mic turns off, apparently. Less comfortable with the head up, and you have a harder time getting your hips all the way up there if you're looking at what's going on in the legs. So just relax the head, let the lower body do the work. If you're still wearing your band, we still want to keep the tension all the time. Always pushing out. Anytime a band is at the knees. All right, crunches or tucks. I'm going to demonstrate the tuck here. So hands on the floor. Plank or push up position. Feet on top of the ball. And then we're curling in. Knees towards the elbows. And then back out again. Try to get nice full extension of the legs. So try not to finish here. All the way out. If you find you're rolling all over the place, uh, then likely what you need to do is just put your feet a little bit wider on the ball. So if your feet aren't really close to each other, you're going to roll around a lot. You'll be a lot more stable if you bring your feet a little bit outside. If you need your crunches that round, keep it going. You got four, three, two, and one. Nice work, everybody. That's two rounds, or two sets, I should say. We have one more set to go. So back to the sumo walks, or sumo turns. All right, three, two, and one. Here we go. Hopefully you've got a band. That's challenging your glutes here. If you feel like you've only got maybe light bands at home, but you have multiple bands, you can put more than one band on. Put two light bands on, you might have a nice medium or heavy resistance waiting for you there. So don't feel you gotta limit yourself to one. We did the band just above the knees for all three exercises in this circuit. We're going to be placing the band in different places as we move through the workout, uh, potentially. All right. Uh, ball curls last time, guys. On your back. We got 90 more seconds of work in round one. Here we go. Curl it in. Drive it up. Back down and back out. Keep those knees apart. We don't want them crashing in. When you're doing your drive up, we want to think about driving from the glutes. So try not to push your belly up. We want to drive the hips up. So think more of like a pelvic thrust than like a, a belly pop. I don't know what you call that. But keeping your abdominals engaged will help prevent putting pressure into the low back. Keep the breath coming in. All right. Third exercise, tucks or crunches. If you want to challenge yourself on the crunch, then you can join me here. So get in position. We're going to go up, and then we're going to hold the top of the crunch. We're driving the shoulders and the arms and the chest up to the ceiling. The neck is relaxed. But the abs are working hard here, and we're just gonna hold it. When you get too tired, come down for a bit of a relaxation, and then come back up and hold again when you can. If you still got your band on, I still wanna see those knees out wide. Don't let the knees come together. Nice work. All right, guys, that's our first set, or first circuit, I should say. Okay. Circuit number two, 
So we're going to go into a band, tricep extension. There's a couple ways to do this. If you have a nice long band, you can stand on it with your heel, bring your arm up behind you, elbow high, and then you're extending overhead. Okay, so that's our tricep extension. If you only have one band, you might be doing single arm. You can maybe grab one band with two arms, getting positions a little bit trickier, but it's doable if you do both sides at the same time. It really depends on what band you have. If you only have mini bands, you can pull it off. You can have one hand holding the band behind you, and then do it there. Hopefully you guys can see that working. So that's a couple options. Our second exercise, we're gonna keep our band, either short or long. We're gonna go into a wall ball squat. So you also need your ball. If this is way too much equipment, then just do the ball. That's the most important part. Start with the ball at the butt. We're gonna go into a wall squat. You can do dynamic up and down or just hold it. And with the band, when we go down, we're gonna pull the band apart. When we come out, we're gonna come back in. So wall ball squat with optional pull apart. The third exercise, we're gonna place the ball on the wall, place our arms on the side of the ball, and then we're just gonna push. Think of a twisting motion as hard as you can into the ball. You can also do that one with a partner. Um, I'll talk about it later when we get there. So tricep extensions, here we go. Step on your band if it's long, or grab it behind the back if it's short. We're gonna do uh, half the time on one side, if you're doing single. So I'll tell you to switch here in three, two, and one. Switch sides if you're on a single arm. If you're doing bilateral, just keep going. The next round, we're gonna do the full 45 seconds on one arm, and then we'll do the opposite arm on the third round. So it's just a little bit of a warm up to learn the movement. Really keep the elbow high and close to the head on that one. All right, very good. We got wall ball squat to pull apart. So grab your ball, place it on the wall. Make sure it's closer to the butt region when you're standing. Feet slightly in front of you. Band in the front. We're gonna squat and pull apart. Stand up, come together. Squat and pull apart. Stand and come together. Notice I still have my green band on my knees. I'm still pushing out. If you don't have the band on the knees anymore, that's fine. Or if you wanna take it off, that's fine. We don't really need it for any of these three exercises, but we can keep it on just to add a little bit of work. And if you're holding, then just hold down here. We're trying to keep the arms nice and long and in that T position. Good. Come on down. And then we have a wall ball twist. So place the ball against the wall. If you don't have a wall and you have a partner, then you just stand on opposite sides of the ball to each other and you push the ball into each other's hands. It's a nice little fun partner drill. I can't demonstrate for that, to, that to you because I don't have anyone to demonstrate with. It's pretty lonely in here, guys. Again, when we're halfway, I'm gonna tell you to switch sides and switch sides. So other way and push. Keep going. So with this one, I really want you to focus on doing this motion, twisting, not leaning into it. Focus on that twist and focus on activating through the front of the abdominals. Hopefully that helps you get a good workout. All right, that's one set. So we're going right back to the tricep extension. Do the opposite arm to what you started with. If you did bilateral, uh, then you go ahead and bilateral again. I'm sorry, we did both sides in the first round, didn't we? So pick any side. I'm doing my right side here. It's 
actually my left, but I'm trying to mirror for you guys. So don't worry about commenting, I don't know right from left. And we're gonna go the full 45 seconds. If you feel you can't, then just take a break and then go back into it when you can. Because we missed the halfway point already. So we're just gonna have to work through it. Five seconds. Three, two, and one. Very good. All right, wall ball squats. If you don't have that long resistance band, then just grab a mini band, place it around the hands or the wrists, and you can do the same thing. You're just not gonna go nearly as far. If you do go that far with the mini band, then you might be tearing it in half. So please don't go that far. But you might just go outside shoulder width and back together. You're still gonna work the same muscles, just not quite the same range of motion. And that's just one of the compromises based on equipment that we have or don't have. But we're still working the muscle, so that's what's important. And if you want to just hold the bottom, you go for it. I'm not going for that today, because i got to save some energy for later. All right, we're back to the wall twist. So pick a side. We're going to go for a full 45. And here we go. Slight bend at the knees, twisting, pushing into the ball. If you're putting a lot of effort in, then you can maybe work for five seconds, release, take a break, catch your breath, and then push again for another five. If you have more of a moderate intensity pressure, then just try to keep it for the full 45. If your ball is quite inflated, it's not actually going to go anywhere. So don't think, oh, my ball's not moving, I'm weak. If it's inflated, it's just going to stay exactly where it is on the wall. If you have a fairly deflated ball, you might get a little bit of movement. Four, three, two, one. Good. All right, remember which side you just twisted on because we've got to go to the other side when we come back. All right. Last set, guys, grab your band. I'm gonna show the mini band again. So if you just have mini bands, grab it behind the back. You gotta do a funky little arm thing there. And then you're going through the presses. Notice how high my hand is on this band because I don't wanna break my band. These mini bands, well any bands, we typically don't want to stretch it beyond twice its resting length. So from here to here is about it. So if I'm doing this exercise and my hand is down by my waist, then I'm going to go way past twice the resting length. And I don't want to break my band, so that's why my hand's a little bit higher at the back. All right, three, two, one. That's it. Okay, we're back to the wall ball squats. I'm gonna get started with you guys, and then we're gonna talk a little bit more about how you can change the resistance or the intensity on the bands you have. So here we go, squat, pull apart, and back up. You guys keep going. If you only have one band, or you have limited intensities on the bands, we can make exercises easier or harder with just the one band. So here I have, well let's say I have a red band. Okay, easy for some exercises, hard for others. If I grab the whole band and pull, there's a lot of tension. But if I release one end of the band, so I'm just holding one end of the loop, I have the intensity, it's a lot easier. The closer I grab on a band, the harder it is. The wider, the wider I grab, the easier it is. So there's a couple ways we can change our intensity using those longer resistance bands. Uh, twisting, so we're back on the wall. Make sure you switch which side you're on. I didn't talk about how to adjust this or manipulate this if you don't have a ball. If you don't have a ball, you can do the same thing just on the wall. It's an isometric contraction. You just need an object 
that can push back against your force. So you could even do this with a partner. I stand with my hands together, my partner standing with their hands. We put the back of our hands together and we're both twisting in opposite directions. It's a super fun partner-based exercise. If you're working out with somebody, you want to do this exercise, but someone's a lot stronger than the other, if you are a lot stronger than the other person, make your base of support narrow. If you're not as strong as the person you're with, get low, get wide. You can even bend your elbows a little bit, and that will make you a lot stronger in that exercise. All right, guys, that is our second circuit. Nice work. We have two minutes here to prepare for our third round. I haven't taken this band off my knees this whole workout, and it might just stay there. So, our next round or circuit is going to start with a ball hip drive. Um, ideally, we keep the band at the knees here, and we can put quite a heavy band on for this one because our feet are staying on the ground. So, we're going to start by sitting on the ball. You're going to roll until the ball is between the shoulder blades. Feet. Shoulder width apart or a little bit wider. And then you're going to drive your hips up until you're in a tabletop position. Lower the hips back down and repeat. I want you to grab the heaviest band you have or multiple bands and really load up the glutes on that exercise. The second one is going to be a band push up. This will be with these guys. Also, an option maybe in the third set, second or third set with the mini bands. What we're going to do is we're going to place the band around the back, under the armpits, hooked on my thumbs, and either I'm going to go to a wall, and this will make a wall push-up harder with the band than without, or I can go to the floor, and I can do a standard push-up or push-up from the knees but the band is going to make the push-ups harder than a regular push-up. So find which position you need to do. And then our third exercise, uh, we're done with the ball. Oh, we need it for the hip drives. But the third one is the band and dead bug. So for that one, we have a band at the hands, and we're gonna do opposite kicks. I'll show you when we get there. Let's get on the ball, guys. I missed our time on that one. So, sitting on the ball, pull forward, balls at the uh, shoulder blades, drive the hips up, and back down. We want to focus on the glute squeeze, not the belly drive. So keep the abs pulled down, drive the hips up. Try to reach your tabletop position, letting the head rest against the ball. Keep the knees wide. Hopefully you feel that working into your glutes. All right, band push-ups. So band is going to go behind the back. Loop it into your thumbs, pull it up to your armpits. And start your push-ups. Whatever position is appropriate for you. Goodbye to your leg here. That's why I'm not kicking all the way down. 
just to keep the band in place. An alternative for this is to have your band at your feet, and then you can get probably closer to a full kick. A lot of the same uh, demands here. So if you don't mind moving the band from one exercise to the next, then you can put it down there. All right, back to the hip drives. I'm gonna go a little bit heavier here. Here we go, seating on the ball. Roll back to the shoulder blades. Start those drives. Most importantly, is we're keeping our legs wide. Don't let them crash together. If you want more work, walk your feet wider and make sure the knees stay outside the feet. You should be able to see your big toe in between your legs when you look down. If you don't see your toes there, then push your knees out further. Nice. All right, push-ups. Band around the back. I'm gonna show a quick alternative. Most of you may not have access to something you can hang the band, the band from overhead, but if you have like a floor joist or something, you can hang the band from up top. Then what you do is you get the band around the armpits from the front, go down to the floor, and now the band is actually helping you get back up. So instead of making your push-up harder, it's making the push-up easier, which is a great way to transition or learn how to do push-ups from your feet if you can't do them yet. What do we got? We got five, four, three, two, and one, nice work everybody. And we're back down for the dead bugs. I'll show it with the resistance band this time. Band at the knees or at the feet, that's your choice. So if you've got the resistance band, just hold it with both hands. Pull overhead, back to the front. You may find it more comfortable with the palms facing back as opposed to palms facing forward. That's up to you. When your leg's kicking down, don't let the other knee follow. So you want to keep the one knee pulled in towards the chest as the other leg kicks out. That's what gives you the tension in the hip flexor. All right, that's two sets. One more set to go. Okay, band at the knees, we got hip drives. Find your ball. Mine rolled away from me there. And here we go. Whew. I am slow at my transitions today. Must be a little tired. All right, drive it up. And down. Drive it up. And down. I just realized I haven't showed a modification for the push ups if you only have mini bands. So I'm going to go into that on the next one. All the way up. Good. Okay, we're done with the ball. So, if you only have mini bands, give this a try. You can place the band at the elbows, probably just below the elbows as opposed to above them. And then you can go through your push up from there. In some ways, the band is helping you make the exercise easier, but in another way, it's making it harder. 
In one capacity, it's helping push the elbows straight, but it's also forcing our shoulders to push out. So let me know what you guys think. Does the band around the elbows make it easier or harder when you do your push-ups? Some of you might feel it's easier, some of you might feel it's a little bit harder. You can let me know. What do we got here? Three, two, and one. All right, on your back. Last time, guys, we got the dead bug. Let's get in position. Opposite arm and leg. Keep pulling the low back down to the floor. Keep the abs strong. We're working the hip flexors, the abdominals. We're working the fronts of the shoulders. And we're working our brains here. If you're one of those less than coordinated people, and your arms and legs are all over the place right now. It's okay, no one is watching you. Except for maybe your spouse or your children, or your dog. They might laugh, but they love you, so it's okay. All right, guys, that's our full three rounds and our full three circuits. So that's our workouts with the bands and balls. Thank you for joining in. Whew. Hopefully you guys were able to work as hard as you wanted. Uh, I was a little, a little more tired this morning. Uh, I think after the kettlebell workout yesterday, so my energy is a bit lower, I apologize about that. But hopefully you were able to learn an exercise or two, uh, get some tips on the workouts. Let's get a couple stretches in here. We got about three minutes before we need to shut it down. So uh, bands work, band work, uh, glutes quite a bit, so always pushing out. So we're gonna go into a bit of a deeper glute stretch here uh, today. Uh, we're gonna use the wall again. We used this the last time we used the bands, I think it was, I might be mistaken, but we did the wall stretch recently. So we're gonna go back here, uh, lying, uh, just by a wall. If you don't have a wall handy, cross the legs, pull to the chest, standard glute stretch. If you got the wall, you're gonna flip over. You're gonna place your left leg straight up on the wall. Cross the right foot over top of the left thigh. Pull your tailbone down into the floor and start sliding your left heel down the wall. You're gonna start feeling a stretch in the glute. We don't want the pelvis coming off the floor. So if that happens, either bring your foot back up, you've gone too far, or just wiggle yourself away from the wall a little bit more and try again. But you wanna keep the pelvis down. You can push the knee down here if you'd like. Pushing the knee towards the wall will increase the stretch. All right, before we switch sides, just take your left foot, slide it to the floor. And now we're gonna drop both legs over to the left until your right foot is rested on the ground. Keep your right knee pushed up to the ceiling and pull your hips down to the floor. We're looking to stretch out more of the gluteus medius and minimus on the outside of the hip, as opposed to the glute max, the big, glute muscle that we just stretched on the wall. Deep breaths out here, let's relax. All right, come back up please. So, right leg straight up on the wall. Cross the left leg over the right thigh and start your descent. Slide the heel down the floor, check the pelvis, don't let the hips come up. Once you get a good glute stretch, hold it. You can add a little bit of knee pressure if you'd like. It's one of my favorite glute stretches. Hopefully you're enjoying it as well. I like using the wall to stretch. I just feel I can really relax. I'm not in a standing or seated position, just lying down and take my time and enjoy the stretch 
a little bit more, a little bit longer. But we don't have all day, so let's bring our right foot down to the floor and drop the legs over to the right. Left foot is rested on the floor, left hip pulled down to the floor, left knee stays high. I just realized I've been staring at uh, the ceiling away from you guys for like the last three or four minutes. This is probably the worst YouTube video in terms of entertainment over the last few minutes. I apologize for that. But hopefully you're also lying on the floor just staring at your ceiling so you wouldn't even know what I'm doing. All right guys, come on up. I'm gonna leave it just at a glute stretch. If you wanna stretch anything else out, please do. But I'm gonna call it here at 45 minutes. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you want to pick up your uh, intensity a little bit, we've got heavyweights today. It's Friday, so Friday, 5 o'clock, uh, heavy dumbbells, heavy, ke heavy kettlebells. Hopefully I get a little more energy between now and then. Uh, if I don't see you later, then have a wonderful weekend, guys. Stay safe, and I'll see you next week. Take care. Oh, uh, normally Saturdays uh, I do a skipping class, uh, but I think uh, this weekend we will not have it. Um, I'm just taking the whole weekend off. It's been an absolute wild week here. Um, so I'll see you guys on Monday, uh, if not 5 p.m. tonight. Take care.